Thank you very much for listening to this presentation. This is a presentation made to parents in a part, as part of a family learning and family enrichment program at Bishop Briggs Academy that was presented in February 2024. And the topic of this presentation is supporting young people with anxiety or stress and building positive self-esteem. My name is James Orr and I'm a teacher of wellbeing at Bishop Briggs Academy. And what I'd like to just do is introduce myself. Um, I work in the wellbeing support base at the school and our aim is to provide a safe and nurturing environment for children who require support for their social, emotional and mental health and wellbeing. The reasons can be varied why people might need some support from wellbeing base, but those but could include those with emotional distress, anxiety, behavioural challenges and those at risk of school avoidance. The support base offers a range of interventions and it has nurture principles at its core. So just a quick reminder to those who are listening about the kind of support that we can provide in the wellbeing base. We've got um, anxiety support, including exam stress. We have a program called Liam, which is called Let's Introduce Anxiety Management, which is run in conjunction with NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. Um, this can be delivered both as a one-to-one -one and at group level. And the basis of this training and this course is what's made up some of the, comp top the topics of this presentation. We can provide support for school avoidance, um, friendships and relationship groups, nurture groups, um, support on emotional self-regulation, including anger management and emotion coaching. We help manage transitions and change, including Seasons for Growth, which is a course based on um, originally bereavement, but also significant changes in a child's life. And we can work on resilience. And we are open for support at lunchtime. And we also offer Lego therapy. So for this presentation, I'd like to first of all uh, talk about the understanding of what anxiety and stress are, the causes of anxiety in pupils, some of the symptoms of anxiety, what we would call the anxiety trap, um, different ways to manage anxiety, and then at the end we're going to talk briefly about building positive self-esteem, and then I'll direct you to some other resources that you might find useful. So first of all, what is anxiety? Well, this is something that we all experience. Um, it, we can describe it as anxiety, anxious, worried, nervous, or afraid. And these are all different terms that some people use when describing anxiety. It's linked to our thoughts. It's linked to our body and our actions. And this is a model that's often used in cognitive behavioral therapy. Anxiety is completely normal. That's something that's really important to um, establish with particularly young people. But it also can be a positive in our lives. Um, and I'm going to show you a video in a, in a, in a moment about um, the origins of anxiety and why it can be useful. The anxiety can also become difficult if it appears in times when we're not in danger or if it stops us from living our lives fully. And that's when when the pupils we work with in Bishop Riggs Academy, that's when I would be involved with that kind of process because when anxiety stops young people or anyone uh, fulfilling their lives to their fullest extent, that's when we need to find new ways to manage that anxiety. The human mind has evolved to think in such a way that it naturally creates psychological suffering. You see, back in the Stone Age, 200,000 years ago, life was pretty dangerous for our caveman ancestors. So if a caveman or cavewoman wanted to survive, their minds had to constantly be on the lookout for things that might hurt or harm them. And if that cave person's mind wasn't good at predicting, spotting, or avoiding danger, what happened to her? The default setting of the caveman mind was safety first. And we in the modern world have inherited this. Our modern minds are constantly warning us of things that might hurt or harm us. The caveman mind says, watch out, there might be a bear in that cave, you could get eaten. Watch out, that shadow on the horizon might be an enemy from another clan, you could get speared. Our modern mind then does worrying, predicting the worst, avoiding anything that scares you, anxiety in all of its different forms. Back in caveman days, you survive an encounter with a bear or a wolf, then it's useful to replay it. It's useful for your mind to go over the events and remember what you did to survive so that you're better prepared for next time. But in our modern world, we go over and over painful memories, dwelling on them, reliving them, even when there's nothing useful to learn or the lesson has been well and truly learned a long time ago. 
In the Stone Age era, as a caveman or cavewoman, you have to fit in with the group. If you are alone, you will soon die. So your mind compares you to others in the group. Am I fitting in? Am I contributing enough? Am I following the rules? Am I doing anything that might get me thrown out? Now, in modern life, we're always comparing ourselves to others. But the problem is, we're no longer in a small group. Our groups are enormous today, and we carry with us devices that constantly feed us images and stories of people all over the planet. This constant comparison ramps up our fear of being judged or rejected or not fitting in or just not being good enough. The caveman mind tells you you need more food, you need more water, better weapons, better shelter. The cave people who fought this way lived longer and had more offspring. Unfortunately, in the modern world, this manifests as greed, dissatisfaction, craving, wanting, it's never enough, I need more, more, more. And if all of that wasn't bad enough, these Stone Age thought patterns are intensified by the sheer pace and complexity of modern life. Our frantic existence, rushing from task to task, that never-ending to-do list. So, when your mind starts doing this unhelpful stuff, as all minds do, remember, it's not defective or abnormal, and it's not deliberately trying to make your life difficult. It's simply doing the job it has evolved to do, trying to keep you safe and save you from pain. So that video um, just gave us a bit of an idea about the evolution of the human mind. And it's a video that comes from Dr. Russ Harris, um, who has written a book called The Happiness Trap. And obviously what we got from that video uh, is that anxiety is a protection mechanism. What we'll often call when we work with pupils here is this anxiety alarm. It's a way to keep ourselves safe. When we're anxious, we will have what we call a fight, flight or freeze response. Um, and it's an evolutionary adaptation but the problem is, it doesn't always blend well with modern society. As we saw from the video, when we're feeling the anxiety of social media or the modern working life, that isn't what our anxiety alarm was designed for originally. It was to keep us safe from predators and keep us collective as a group and to keep us alive. So when young people come and talk about anxiety, they could manif that can manifest itself in so many different physical symptoms. Some common symptoms we see are having breathing that gets faster and faster, having a faster heartbeat, trembling or shaking, having the feeling of butterflies in your stomach, having a dry mouth, needing the toilet, feeling hot, having you know have your face go red, or just having difficulty concentrating. And as I'm sure you could imagine, all these things can have a massive impact in a young person fulfilling their potential in school or just in life in general. So what we often like to look at when it comes to anxiety is this idea of falling into an anxiety trap. And I've got a diagram here on the screen which talks about an anxiety trap. And this is more of a context that I think the average person might be able to understand because it links to what we all really experienced a few years ago around the idea of the COVID pandemic. So if we look at this anxiety trap from the, stop, from the top, you can see that it says the situation is we wake up coughing. What that situation can do then is it will start to make you think certain ways. So you might have negative thoughts around um, what's happening. So I must be infected with the virus. I need to check and make sure I'm not ill so I, can, so I don't want to spread it to my loved ones or my colleagues. So these thoughts then move into our feelings, a feeling of being scared, having anxiety, panic, feeling bad, thinking maybe you've done something wrong. And then this would influence our behaviours. So we might do things that appear logical, but actually don't help with the feeling of anxiety. So constantly checking ourselves for other signs of the virus, reading constantly about what COVID-19 can do and what it would um, how it would how it would appear in the body and and then doing things that might not be healthy when it comes to dealing with the stress that we feel around it you know like 
maybe overeating or, or any other way that people might deal with um, their stress. And then because we're feeling stressed, this can then make us feel like we've got physical sensations like having heart palpitations or feeling sweaty or having discomfort in the stomach, that kind of butterflies thing. But the thing with the trap is that can then pull us back into the trap and make us stay in this cycle, this negative cycle, because those physical sensations might then also make you feel that they're symptoms of the COVID-19 virus and that then continues the negative cycle. And this will often happen with other things, you know, that young people, maybe when they have social anxiety, they think people are going to laugh at them or look at them and they don't want to be the center of attention. So they keep away from social situations. If they are in a social situation, they might start to get anxious. So they might themselves start to feel like they're breathing heavier, they're sweating, they're going red. And then when you see someone who looks uncomfortable or unwell, it might be natural to look at them and to try and be concerned. But to the person who's experienced the anxiety, that then reinforces this idea that people will be looking at them. And so that would make things worse and keep them in that kind of anxiety trap. So when we're working with young people, what we try and do is we try and look for the anxiety trap and try and find ways to break out of the anxiety trap. Or even better, find ways to not fall into the anxiety trap. Now, what we're going to do now is go into some ideas about ways people can manage their anxiety. But the first thing is just to cover the basics. And I'm sure if most people watching this presentation will be aware of this, but I think it's worthwhile just repeating that um, pupils, if they do the following, that can give them the best chance to prevent or help deal with their anxiety. This would include eating a balanced diet with regular meals. And I've put here including breakfast because as time goes on, what I find quite often is that young people come to school without having had breakfast through a number of reasons, but often just being busy and not getting up in time and um, getting enough sleep cutting down on caffeine intake this includes for example red bull and monster you know even though young people who are under, under 16 shouldn't always necessarily be accessing that in the shops it is the case that young people can do that so trying to get young people to cut down on caffeine including coffee and um, energy drinks avoiding alcohol and drugs avoiding smoking and vaping which is much more prevalent now and reducing social media time and getting regular exercise so these would be the basic things that i would recommend young people try and implement in their lives in order to reduce or deal with anxiety in a better way. Then we have situations when it comes to managing anxiety and there's different strategies and what we'd often do with young people is we would look at the different strategies, get them to try them and then find the strategy that they, the young person thinks works for them. So this would allow them to build this virtual toolkit of strategies that would um, help manage the anxiety. A very common one is something called calm breathing. Um, this can be very useful for young people, and a lot of the young people I work with say that this works very well for them, but it requires practice and it requires deliberate practice. But what you would end up doing is breathing slowly and smoothly, breathing in through your nose through a count of three, pausing for a moment, and then breathing out through your mouth through a count of five. And there's a physiological response for that longer breathing out than the breathing in, which can switch your nervous system away from that kind of fight or flight response. Now, I've got a picture here called the which is the icon for the app called Hospa Chill. Some young people maybe struggle with the idea of leading their own calm breathing. And the Hospa Chill app has got a number of different activities, completely free, but it's got a number of different activities that young people can use to guide their own calm breathing. So there would be little recordings in there that um, if you go into the app, you can see this would be the home page. And if you go to activities in the bottom left, that would give you a number of activities. And you can see the top two there are tummy breathing and calming breaths. These would be guided breathing activities. There are other ones in there. For example, down the bottom, squeeze a lemon. And below that, which you can't see, is turtle fun, which I'm going to come on to in the next couple of slides. The next way to help manage anxiety is through muscle relaxation and as you can see here that talks about sitting or lying in a comfortable position you can maybe close your eyes and then tensing mu different muscles in a part of your body and then as you breathe out and release the tension in your muscles you can feel that release of tension and it can feel that your own tension and tightness is flowing away inside the hospital app there is a couple of, there are a couple of activities relating to muscle relaxation 
one of which is called Turtle Fun, which has become a firm favourite through many of the young people who have gone through this support in the wellbeing base here at Bishop's Academy. So that's one I can highly recommend. Another thing to think about is calm images. So in this example, we'll get young people to sit or lie in a comfortable position and close their eyes and imagine a place that they would find calm and relaxing. Often it can be somewhere they've been before. I've had young people who've talked about maybe holiday homes or families that they go and visit in their, their living room, for example, is one of them. But they could also be nice sunny places or places that mean a lot to people. So for example, you have a beach, a beautiful garden, a tropical island. I've put this picture in because that's the kind of a model about where my happy place would be. But what we'll then get young people to think about is to concentrate their mind on the sensations that they would experience in this place. So um, what would you smell? What would you hear? What would you see? How would it feel? And that can bring the mind to focus on that image rather than the, the sensations and feelings of anxiety that young people might focus on. The next two things that young people can do is doing something about getting active. Um, often when we're feeling anxious, we might have adrenaline spiking in our body and a significant kind of vigorous exercise for a short burst could help you, you have the idea of using up that adrenaline um, and bring ourselves back down to a level, a certain sort of relaxed level. The other thing that young people should be doing is if they're feeling anxious is spending time doing things they find relaxing. They don't want to be in a position where they feel more stressed. They want to feel more relaxed. So that could be spending time with friends, reading a book, writing, crafting, playing an instrument, have a hot drink and paint their nails. You notice I, I haven't put anything around mobile phones or social media. I think that we need to move away from the idea that being on a phone is a beneficial activity for young people, particularly if they need to calm down. There's a number of issues around comparisons and self-image around social media, which we have spoken about in previous family learning events and um, we do work on with young people in school. But um, being on social media will not really always help with someone with anxiety, it can actually exacerbate anxiety. So I'd be thinking about doing active things or relaxing things away from devices and often with other people in physical human contact in play, within the, the same room as the person because there's evidence to show that, that kind of social interaction is much more beneficial than the, the idea of virtual social reaction. Then we've got the idea of dealing with our thoughts. So we've got our feelings and our behavior, but we've also got our thoughts to feel with. And there's two things we like to ask young people to think about. First of all, there's coping thoughts. And this is when, when we've got anxiety, we can jump to worst case scenarios. Like this is a disaster, I can't cope. Um, but these can keep young people trapped in that anxiety trap and, and go through the negative cycle. So what we do is we have coping thoughts where we can cope. This is gonna be okay, I can do this. I've, you know, if you've got pupils who are struggling with coming into school and the anxiety being in the school building, we can help train young people to think about the fact, well, I was in yesterday and nothing bad happened, so I coped yesterday, which means I can cope today. And then a step further on than that is the idea of kind thoughts. Uh, these would be things that are actually positive in a mindset and encourage, help focus on things that young people are trying hard at and that can build their confidence. So, for example, instead of thinking, I always get things wrong, let's try reframing the in a more positive sense that it's okay to make mistakes and um, often we often say to young people you know it is human nature to be self-critical we'll often all of us will be very critical of ourselves what i try and get them to think about is if that was your friend thinking that what would you say to them or if your friends knew you were thinking this what would they say to reassure you because people are often much kinder to each other than they are to themselves and that's something i try and get young people to think about so what we'll then do is we will try and get young people to use the tools we've spoken about. Um, and when it comes to avoiding the anxiety trap, we want pupils to face their anxiety. And this is an important thing that I think it's important for young people, all people to realize is that facing the anxiety is an important part of dealing with it. Avoiding the anxiety, anxious activity is not going to be in the long term beneficial or healthy. Because I think facing anxiety helps young people show themselves that they're capable of getting through situations that might cause them to feel anxious. Now, this will be uh, through a process called a coping plan or a coping ladder where young people will slowly use the strategies to take part in activities that might 
individually cause a minimal amount of anxiety. So if, for example, a child is worried about going into school or going to a party, the answer isn't just to go, yep, you're going into school, going into a party. It would be to gradually expose young people to different levels of that kind of stimulus so they can start to learn to cope. So for example, before a party, we've got this coping plan. So we're going to use coping and kind thoughts. I can manage. I've been to a party before and got on fine. They might sit and relax using muscle relaxation. During the party, they might use their coping thoughts again, but also they might use calm breathing to keep themselves calm in, within the party. Then after the party, they'll reflect on how they've used their toolkit of um, responses to anxiety. And they might use kind thoughts, for example, like, I did really well to stay at that party. I did my best. And this is all part of an aspect of something called graded exposure, which is how we can help young people deal with the significant anxiety inducing moments in their life by exposing them slowly and over time to the stimulus of that anxious event um, and l teach young people that they can cope with it. So that might mean being in the building where a party is going to take place or going into the school building outside of school hours where it's not as busy, it's not as intimidating and showing the young person that they can be in the building and that that can work, that can be a positive experience for them. And then slowly building up to the, the main event of the thing that young people are most um, worried about. The other thing we just said we'd touch on at the end here is about building positive self-esteem. Dealing with the anxious thoughts and having that great exposure can actually be something that builds self-esteem anyway. But sometimes having a time to build positive self-esteem can also help with anxiety. So some people can find these ideas useful and obviously different things work for different people at different times. So it's only it's important that young people only try what they're comfortable with. But we've got being kind to yourself, which links to that idea we talked about previously about um, treating yourself how you would treat your friends. Uh, try and recognize positives, those kind of kind thoughts. Think about the positive aspects rather than dwelling on the negatives. Building a support network, both through friends, family, teachers, any other human beings in your life that you feel will give you good support. Um, you can try talking therapy, which is an option. Set yourself a challenge, which would be an idea of pushing yourself to stretch yourself out of your comfort zone slightly, improve that. It's, it's you, you are able to achieve things and that sense of evidence that you have that you are able to achieve things will build positive self-esteem and then obviously just looking after yourself with those very basic things we talked about at the start about diet and exercise and sleep just if you're interested in this topic and would like to talk read more or learn more about it i've got some resources here on the slide so there's a book called helping your child with fears and worries by creswell and willits which i could recommend we've got graded exposure by dr paul stone on YouTube or the kids book read aloud Scaredy Squirrel which is maybe for younger pupils but that's the idea of overcoming fear and anxiety and then you've got a couple of websites below here you've got Young Minds website dealing with phobias which has got some things that will link very nicely to this and then there's a, um, a document from Lothian Health Board um, which has got quite a nice way of bringing together some ideas about how you support your child with fears and worries and it's a self-help guide which I've linked there um, obviously, if you need any further assistance with anything, then please feel free to contact the school and contact myself um, if you require anything else or your child's guidance teacher or your child's year head. So in summary, the messages I would like to take away from this presentation are young people need to know that anxiety is normal and it can be useful because it can help. A small amount of stress around exams, for example, can help focus the mind on the important things in life. However, Anxiety won't always be made to disappear, but we can become better at dealing with it. Asking for help is okay, and everyone will have different ways for coping. And young people should be as kind to themselves as they are to others. And they should face anxious experiences because that will build long-term resilience. Avoiding the anxious experiences will make things worse in the long run. And that's the kind of takeaway points I hope you take away from this presentation. So thank you very much for listening. Um, this was obviously, as I say, an evaluation, uh, sorry, a presentation for parents with that had an evaluation attached. But if you're watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to contact me on the email you can see there um, or contact the school directly. And I hope this has been useful for you. And thank you for listening. <laughs>